Hello and welcome to the show. This week's fail race versus the community. We were to go racing with C-Class Renault Clios. Our first race was at the Bugatti circuit. I got a very quick start in the Clio V6 here, uh, making up a number of positions from the back of the grid as we all are thinking of running two and three wide through the very fast kink that uh, that is turn one. We all make it through that section okay. Unfortunately, a spinner further up would cause a little bit of chaos as everybody was frantically trying to avoid them. On the most part, though, we made it through okay. A little bit of bumping and me and a couple of other cars uh, had to take some uh, quite severe avoiding action. But on the most part, we got through the corner without too many problems and things went wrong for a, a Williams Clio throwing up a huge smoke screen down, <laughs> down at, uh, at this part of the uh, the course. The Clio we are following at the moment, though, made it through okay. It was battling with a Williams as they run up towards the next curl corner. Both the cars having a bit of problem with understeer running wide, trying to go around the outside of a V6. Doesn't work though as they both lose a place to a turquoise car that uh, would would get them while they're still fighting too wide. A V6 gets a very, very good run out of the turn. It's going to make it three wide down this next stretch, but uh, going around the outside of one car is tough. Around the outside of two, never likely to work. And sure enough, the V6 gets uh, overtaken by one of the Williams. The, the Red Clio we're following now finds a way uh, as it gets a much better drive down this uh, next straight, finds a way past the V6 up ahead. He's still going to be too wide though as we come down towards the chicane for the first time very fast chicane this one and quite solidly too wide unfortunately one of the Williams in the background gets himself just kind of runs out of road through there which is kind of inevitable with so many cars trying to fit in such a small piece of tarmac the Williams here is looking at the inside can't quite get the move done though although the red car is forced to uh, take quite a wide line puts you on a narrow line through the next corner gets quite a lot of understeer is uh, is out wide coming towards the final quarters though the Williams I don't think quite expected the red car to have a dive at that uh, particular corner that forces the red car across the inside. However, everybody survived a rather frantic opening lap. For me, I had a lot of work to do, catching back up through the field, but my Clio V6 was going really rather well. I'm not a particular fan of the, the Bugatti circuit, certainly not my favourite track to a race around, but seeing as this is the only French track we have in the game that's really suitable for these cars, figured I'd give it a run as you don't use it uh, too often, and I was really pleased that my V6 was working really rather well. I just had a lot of overtaking, a lot of cars to, uh, to try and get past, and I was stuck behind another one of the V6s. These tended to be one of the faster cars, in a straight line but of course when we're both in the same car we were fairly evenly matched down that straight I thought about going around the outside I gave it a go and simply didn't quite have the grip I got a very good run off of the turn and it's uh, <laughs> yeah pretty much bumper to bumper you know it's close when the replay camera doesn't want to show the car in front that was how close I was to the back of the Clio ahead as we come down towards the chicane though I thought I saw an opportunity I still couldn't quite get my car alongside however the vehicle ahead brushed the curb on the inside he just gets a little bit of oversteer on the way out of the corner that's all the invitation that I need to uh, have a big dive up the inside and sure enough I could get my car passed but still got to worry about these next couple of corners that uh, white car is still right there behind me and sure enough I'm getting a little bit of understeer running a tad wide through the next corner not really where you want to be managed to uh, all get away with it although still slightly out position around this final turn as well but yeah, just about surviving to hang on to that position at the front uh, or towards the front at least it was equally uh, entertaining racing this was uh, the fight over fourth place between a uh, Williams Clio and a much more modern car the Williams much of the straight line speed but was struggling through the turns the 2010 Clio here uh, was much much faster could close up massively through that first chicane and we'll then be right back on the tail of the Williams as we come down towards the uh, the next corner so there was certainly an, an interesting battle going on uh, between these cars we see the Williams having some big issues just couldn't get the car turned and you see all of the pairs that were going on at this stage of the race all of the pairs fighting for various positions the green Clio here makes the pass stick the Williams very much thought about having a big dive up the inside <laughs> changes his mind as the green car gets quite a bit of understeer running a bit wide out of there however 
Hanover can carry enough corner speed to just about keep ahead of the Williams as they come down the next straight. Certainly when you're battling with that, uh, with that car with that bit more straight line speed, you've got to make the most of the corners to try and kind of break that, uh, that overtaking train. I was continuing to make progress, continuing to bring the other Clio V6 with me at uh, this point. It's always good when you see the cars ahead of you are having a bit of a <laughs> bit of a fight. It gives you hope and sure enough the red Clio running very very wide coming on towards this back straight and the V6 some good straight line speed and another close up at the back <laughs> of, a, uh, of a fellow Renault. I just got the straight line speed down this back straight to a breeze past the, the more modern car. The other V6 has a go at the inside. He can't quite hold it uh, across the curves. The curves are vicious around here. You've got to be very, very careful trying to run across those curves. Incredibly easy to get the car sliding. The uh, the white car gets stuck on the outside. Again, the uh, car on the inside takes a little bit too much of a dive. Can't quite get the the vehicle stopped. They do both manage to uh, get their cars back on track. Uh, this gives me a little bit of breathing space as well. Not having those cars right behind me gives me a uh, relatively easy time to go and attack the vehicle up ahead. The Williams a little bit slow on the final quarter. Not sure if he clipped the uh, the nasty bumpy curbs on the inside or was just slow off the turn. Either way, the V6 was uh, more than match. And again, you know, take the opportunities as and when you can to uh, find a way past the car, and I would move up another position. The, the battle for fourth place would uh, get even larger as the race went on, as another one of the, I think it's the 2010 Clios, would uh, join in the fun as we run down towards this very, very tricky opening section. The Williams Clio was close, but couldn't quite do anything through that first quarter. Of course, as soon as we get to a straight, that Williams Clio was gaining and gaining, but now we're coming to a twisty, the twisty section of the lap, and it just can't carry the corner speed that the other two cars could. The Williams gets to the inside this time around can take the preferred line through that corner but he can't get the pass done it just simply doesn't have the grip to uh, to hold an overtake and uh, yeah for around large parts of this lap it just couldn't quite keep close enough to these other cars to really do anything about it even with the turquoise car here running a little bit wide the Williams is is not quite within range down this next straight and he's got a constant worry of another car sat behind him trying to uh, to find a way past so yeah it's, it's always as I've said many times it's always difficult being in the middle of a three-way battle because you want to go aggressive you want to try and find a way past but when you do that you can often get yourself in trouble uh, if you make the little mistake and then you get overtaken yourself again <laughs> further back we were still uh, often split up into pairs and there was plenty going on in this race another Clio that uh, had had to take some of the the avoiding action had dropped back at the start another V6 was uh, making a good progress through the field catching up to the back of <laughs> another Williams Williams with such an incredible wing <laughs> the huge huge double rear wing on on that Williams the V6 gets to the inside as they come into the chicane and sure enough would uh, manage to uh, to get the pass done but you can see uh, even at this stage in the race is coming towards the closing stage of the race there was still a huge amount of cars close together and even well outside the top 10 there were still people fighting over just about every single position I think this might have been for about 16th between <laughs> these two cars the blue Renault tried his best to get to the inside couldn't quite make it work through either of the corners you can get alongside the yellow car is just getting that much better a run off of the turns and then he can defend into these final couple of corners gives the blue car absolutely nowhere to go although he does play it quite risky running out wide is very easy if you try and get on that power a little bit too soon especially with a slightly understeery front wheel drive car to kind of run wide and stick a wheel on the sand and then that will completely and utterly ruin your run all the way down this straight uh, very easy to give up positions that way uh, most of the cars we're finding were tending to be fairly flat out a couple of cars were having a lift and so on through that uh, kink and then big stop down towards his next corner a good overtaking spot if you're closing up I thought the blue car might have had a go but uh, didn't quite into there and the yellow car was just managing to put a little bit of a gap got a better run off of the turn uh, at that point to uh, just get out of that dangerous zone further towards the front and this is how it went for the uh, for the kind of the lead pack the car we're following at the moment here was in third and there was they could kind of see or see one another. No one was quite close enough, though, to uh, to go for an overtake at this stage. You can see the second week is just about to see first in the distance, second, third, fourth, fifth. We're all kind of yeah within within sight towards the end of the race, but uh, no one was quite able to uh, to get overtakes done. Maybe a couple of cars got themselves in trouble. Second place was a lot closer to the leader at one point. Got themselves into trouble though with the uh, the, the sticky, nasty, bouncy curbs around that uh, around around the track here. They are yeah it can be a little bit of a pain if you uh, if you run over them a bit wrong 
At the front though, it was a Clio V6 that was to go on to take victory. Started from pole and uh, after a little bit of a challenge from a, I think, believe it was a 2010 Clio behind, that faded when that car got stuck on a curb somewhere, lost a fair bit of ground. So a, uh, a relatively uneventful drive for victory but kept it clean, made no silly mistakes. So the V6 would take victory. The 2010 car coming home in second with another V6 claiming third. Now, unfortunately, the replay for the second race was completely knackered. I'll explain that a little bit later at the end of the video. But our third race of the evening would go to the Circuit of the Americas, the West Circuit. I quite like this layout. A lot of people don't particularly. I think it's quite a good layout of a track, although admittedly, Turn 1 is, uh, yeah... <laughs> A little bit of a problem. Sometimes you can get away with it okay, this time not so much. Some poor decision making from a couple of cars towards the front caused some issues. Quite a few cars though made it through okay as we're all running down here. The leader had a big, big moment <laughs> across the curbs. They are some quite nasty curbs around this track, especially if you hit them just that, uh, that little bit wrong. I had managed to survive the opening chaos a little bit better this time out than, uh, than I had at, uh, at the Bugatti circuit and was uh, trying to find a way past some vehicles up ahead as we're all running through the S's. It's very hard to get overtakes done through that uh, first section. I was trying to make the most of the slight speed advantage I had in the V6, but around here there isn't a huge amount of straights for a lot of the track. I do manage to out-accelerate the Williams to get to the inside down here, but I can't quite do anything. The Williams had some great corner speed. Admittedly, he was now being slowed down by the cars up ahead. The <laughs> Clio ahead of us runs wide. I kind of uh, make the most of the opportunity again that, uh, that I had to go up the middle of everyone. Not quite the... Uh, <laughs> The safest of maneuvers. Quite scared about that one. Got it. Got it worked though. Uh, running wide through this next corner, a lot of people struggling with understeer. I haven't driven this circuit for a while, and I'm always terrible at that corner. So yeah, got myself into a little bit, little bit of trouble. Just about though, managing to uh, to get away with it as we're all still very, very close through this next corner. This uh, second to last turn, very fast corner, kind of a deceptively fast corner. You might be tempted to try and have a go at the inside as the Williams Clio does uh, on me if the car ahead is a little bit. It's slow, but it's such a tiny braking zone for it that well, it kind of feels like there should be much more braking for it. There isn't, so very easy to get yourself in uh, in a little bit of bother through that turn. We all got away though with only some minor bumping. Um, the positions I'd gained, I was to uh, to go and lose as the the black clear had a lot of straight line speed on the outside of a, a white V6 that didn't have a huge amount of straight line speed as we come around the hairpin and sure enough the smallest of bumps would uh, upset one of the cars on the inside. Trying to get that first, trying to overtakes down to that first corner, it can be a real pain. Very easy to just slightly misjudge it and get yourself into a bit of trouble. Either way, somehow through all of it I came out of the front of this group which I was uh, <laughs> quite quite pleased about uh, through, uh, through that. The front it was much calmer. The leaders managing to pull a huge margin while the rest of us were busy scrapping uh, second place was coming under fire from a green Clio and sure enough gets to the inside probably one of the uh, the safest of overtaking spots around this track really probably one of the easier overtaking spots as well to the inside at, uh, at that corner uh, the, the, the V6 getting ran a little bit out wide it's yeah probably the easiest turn to uh, to get passes done and while the front was relatively nice and calm uh, the rest it was it was not it was all very very busy there were just huge groups of cars to, uh, together as two Williams are fighting it out. There's another car up ahead that's running wide yet again is a little bit slow off of the turn and everybody's trying to mug each other of positions and there with three wide through this next horrible, horrible corner. Now everybody taking different lines. The Williams coming back to the inside gets the best run and would overtake two cars in one go by getting a good run. If you can get a quick run out of that turn then you could often get some, some decent overtaking, you can get quite a few positions as well, but it's equally easy to make a little bit mistakes around that next seemingly never-ending corner. Williams on the inside bouncing across the curbs, not really where you want to be going. The car we're following a little bit slow off of the turn and is now stuck on the outside as we come towards the final the final corner. I think a slight locked break would uh, put him out wide very near and he loses all the positions he'd gained with uh, that last manoeuvre with uh, just slightly running wide. Can get a decent run out of the turn though, but it's no real match for the black car's straight line speed as they again run down towards turn one. It was a very frantic race, this one. There was a lot going on. Again, pretty much throughout the field, there was, uh, was an awful lot going on. I was in fifth, 
having made my way to the front of this rather manic battle, and while the front four had completely vanished from the rest of us, I was coming under increasing pressure from a Williams Clio. And when we're fighting like this, we're slowing ourselves down a fair bit as well, so yeah, the leaders really were buggering off from the rest of the field. Can never quite decide the best way to defend into turn one, because it is very easy to try and go on the attack, to go on the inside, and then you take such a shallow line that you're so slow off the corner, so I opted not to particularly bother, and now I can hold it around the outside. My V6 had decent grip, and then that puts you on the inside for this next turn, which I was hoping was going to be enough to fend off the Williams problem was the Williams uh, was quick enough around the outside to uh, keep hold of the position but the Williams is bouncing across the curves and I knew where I was quick with my car I could be quick through these final couple of sections down here and uh, the Williams you know I was watching it bouncing across the curves I was hoping I could find a way to get past the Williams held it on very well but just pushed his luck a little bit too much on the exit of that corner ran across the curb ran out wide was a little bit slow off the turn that's going to give me an opportunity to dive up the inside and uh, in the end the Williams can't quite hold it uh, around the outside but it's some decent enough acceleration and still we're stuck going side by side I'm on the outside for probably the third or fourth time this race with a car through there trying trying to get a pass done. This is a, such a tough corner to take an overtaking line. I go for a very tight line through here. Yes, it's a short line through the corner, and initially it gives me the, the position, but the Williams gets a much better drive off of the turn by taking that wide line, which would keep him ahead by the time we get to this really long corner. But then he's struggling with some understeer. He's a little bit slow mid-corner. Not that there is very much you can do through there if the car ahead of you is slow. As I said before, having a dive up the inside here is very, very tricky. I end up going around the outside as he, I think, breaks a little bit too early, realise he's got himself into a slight bit of trouble, but he gets his foot down soon enough on the exit of the corner to uh, keep me stuck on the outside. I'll cut back to the inside to uh, get the position and do with the slightly superior acceleration of the V6 move up or, or reclaim my uh, fifth place. Was a, was a good fun couple of laps there fighting for position. Again, towards the front and things were much calmer. This was uh, over third place as the, uh, the blue V6 tries its best to hold on to a position the silver car had a thought, tried, thought it about the inside, couldn't quite do it, especially across the curbs, launching the car onto a two wheels. Gaps down there are very quickly going to, uh, to vanish when you're trying to run too wide through that section. In the end, wise decision not to bother with a superior acceleration again down towards this uh, hairpin the blue v6 finds himself stuck on the outside and just can't quite do anything against these slightly better handling cars he does hold his own he gets to the inside but uh, just doesn't quite have the grip really of the, the silver car here and would lose his uh, third position but this was miles up the road from our, <laughs> our great big battle over fifth place the, the blue v6 does fight back through the next corner gets a pretty good line actually through there but again we see that taking such a tight line will put you slow off the corner and sure enough the silver car can maintain his position uh, further back the mid pack was still fighting again throughout this race they they remained in uh, fairly fairly large sizable groups this williams bouncing his way across <laughs> the curves trying trying almost gets everything crossed up through <laughs> through the next corner manages to just about get it stopped the the lead car here had the uh, the slight straight line speed advantage we're only talking slight there was no real uh, no real massive uh, straight line speed advantages around here but he was struggling a little bit more through the corners and sure enough running wide through the hairpin isn't going to uh, help matters he does rejoin loses the place to the williams is now immediately under threat from a uh, bright pink v6 there's another v6 tries to get to the inside again they're very nearly going three wide up towards this next corner the the williams gets a little bit caught out out wide as the black car slightly outbreaks himself the v6 makes up all of the positions to now lead this uh, uh, this little group. The Williams, though, still gets a good run, a good enough run off of the turn to uh, keep ahead of the uh, 2010 car. Now, the other V6 is having a look, trying to find a way past, but around the outside, or just any any maneuver around there is very tough. Thinks about having a dive at the inside, changes his mind. The two cars ahead are now battling, and as soon as they start battling, they'll very quickly bring these other two cars up into contention. All it takes is slow yourself down for one corner, and you get to be in trouble again. <laughs> a little bit of bumping between uh, 
between a couple of the cars. I don't think the uh, 2010 quite realised there was a V6 on the inside. The little list of tags between the pair of them. The Williams finds himself at uh, the front of this group as they run up towards Turn 1. As again, we see the, uh, the 2010 car here with the slight straight line speed. He gets past the V6 before they reach the turn, but he runs in far too deep in towards that first corner. He did get up the inside of the Williams as well, but the Williams gets the run of the turn. The V6 is fighting back on the outside. He tries, can't quite do it uh, around the next turn. So that time running quite deep into turn one did work for him, but uh, yeah, it's quite easy to sort of do cutbacks. It's just so many different lines through that first corner that, uh, that can cause some issues. At the front in the race was hotting up as they came on to their final lap. The Green Clio was leading the way from a V6. They run up towards this first corner. The green car opting to take a much wider line and gets himself in trouble while it can work. Runs a wheel across the curb. That tips the car massively sideways. The V6 did a great job of avoiding him. Could have very easily ended in a big shunt between the pair of them. The V6 is around the outside and would find himself up into the lead as they bounce across the curbs down through the, uh, the S's. The V6 getting himself into a little bit of trouble down there. The, uh, the V6 with the straight line speed again in this battle but was being constantly Constantly hounded by that green car was so much faster through the corners was constantly constantly putting pressure on the v6 he has a go up the inside through the next turn takes such a tight line or it's forced to take such a tight line i should say can't quite get the car alongside but there's still a good few opportunities to try and get a pass done the v6 has to just defend and defend through these next corners the other green car though wants to take the victory and as the v6 runs a tad wide he has a go up the inside they slightly touch but uh, the green car just can't quite get that lead back again he overshoots the corner the v6 can cut back and reclaim that lead and at this stage it looks like the v6 has got a decent lead but he's running a little bit wide struggling with some understeer through this next turn and that allows second place to catch up and then there's only two more corners to go but the green car is so far through this next turn the v6 may have been uh, a little bit too cautious has uh, lost all of that margin as they come up towards the final turn the green cars up the inside gets the lead but now's the drag race down towards the line is the green car far enough ahead as they run for the line the v6 has got that acceleration as they cross the line and is very much a photo finish between the the pair of them. a great final lap between between these two cars and just how close well yeah that's uh, about a wheel just over a wheels width between the pair of them over the course of uh, of that race fantastic finish between them uh, if the, the the finish line had been two or three meters further further back the green car would have uh, would have had victory yeah, the uh, second America's race was uh, yeah really rather really rather good fun. A little bit of bumping at, uh, at the start, but uh, on the whole, yeah, a fantastic race throughout the field uh, between these two cars. Uh, the V6 gaining victory, and I think it was a 2010 in both second and third in this race. Third place was actually very very fast. Was catching these guys, especially with their fighting, just ran out of laps. Unfortunately, as I said, the replay for the second race would went missing. I don't know what on earth went on. Uh, a lot of people tried to save it. I tried to save it. I got disconnected from the lobby while it was trying to save it, as did quite a lot of other people. Uh, a few people who did save it, the replay would never load properly. So... Yeah, something about that, something about that race, something about the lobby, whatever, corrupted the replay. So sadly, no replay from that race. I did actually win the uh, the second race. I had a very very dull race to a to victory in that one. I started on pole and vanished away from the field uh, while everybody else was fighting. Had a very dull a dull race there. Uh, what that does mean though is Clio V6 is won every single race of uh, of these. So yeah, it was very much a, a victory for the uh, for the V6. They're good cars. To be fair, it was. Uh, there was a lot of fun with uh, with racing these. Uh, while I didn't do massively well in the, I, I got I got top tens in the in the other two races. I had a lot of fun, a lot of close racing with a lot of cars. And wherever I pointed the camera in these in these replays, there was a lot going on in in these ones. These kind of cars are great fun to uh, to go driving with, and so on.
But uh, that is it for this week's Versity Community. The next one shall be held on Thursday, the 11th of February. We are going to go racing with B-Class budget cars. So the cars must, when you buy them from the, the, the Forza Garage, the cars must start off at 20,000 credits or less. Don't care how much money you spend upgrading the cars to B-Class, but the base car must be 20,000 credits or less. If you would like to sign up and take part in that event, then you can via our forums. There will be a link in the description description find the Ferraris versus the community section and uh, you can sign up in there but uh, that is it from me thank you very much for watching and until next time uh, goodbye